Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Engineering Today. Today we'll present three updates to you. Let's start with SpaceX, then we'll get into discussions regarding Blue Origin and Northrop Grumman. An issue has been raised between several local environmental groups and the federal government over the impact created by SpaceX's test operations and for the development of its massive booster rockets at Boca Chica Beach, South Texas. The Federal Aviation Administration FAA, has previously given permission to SpaceX to use the coastal site for their test launching. The company uses its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets to launch from the coastal site for at least 12 times per year. However, the CEO of the company, Elon Musk, has been using these facilities to develop and holding flight tests of its larger starships, like previously tested SN5 and SN6, and Super Heavy boosters, thus resulting in greater impacts on the coastal environment area than anticipated under the original proposal given to the FAA. According to the Brownsville Herald reports, the coastal site of Boca Chica has become a major platform for SpaceX to develop its starships and hold several test flights. The agenda includes SpaceX team working all day and night to develop its starship prototypes, constructing Super Heavy Booster, expanding the launch pad facilities on Boca Chica grounds, massive building size structures were stacked up at the site. At the time of flight test, Boca Chica Beach and State Highway 4 were shut down for safety purposes. All of this exceeds the original proposal. These activities also involve prototype failures and explosions that anyone expects could happen during a test flight, like one that occurred on May 29th when Starship SN4, one of SpaceX's earlier prototypes, exploded on the test stand, leaving a massive trail of fire around the site. According to the Federal Aviation Administration, officials are making a new environmental assessment EA, to determine the amount the effects are having on the local environment, including sensitive coastal wildlife areas, due to these operations. However, environmental groups say that an EA might be insufficient to record the impacts that are being created on the area. In July, the president of Friends of the Wildlife Corridor, Jim Chapman, wrote a letter to the FAA that said an environmental assessment might not be a solution to this problem considering the amount of impact created due to those operations. SpaceX should give strict environmental impact statement EIS, based on their work instead. Further, the company should not have the access to decide which type of review to conduct as the FAA contends, but rather the agency itself. Friends of Laguna Atascosa National Wildlife Refuge, Defenders of Wildlife, Frontera Autobahn Society, Center for Biological Diversity, and the Lower Rio Grande Valley Sierra Club Group. All these environmental groups have signed the July 3rd letter to the FAA. It urged the FAA to develop a new or supplemental environmental impact statement for SpaceX's current and planned actions at their Boca Chica site. However, the FAA has allowed SpaceX to decide what type of environmental review to conduct. Chapman continued protesting against those operations. He replied to the Federal Aviation Administration's July 17th letter, arguing that the FAA and the applicant, SpaceX, cannot decide whether to pursue an EA or an EIS all by themselves. In the response letter, he reminded FAA policy that states, once the FAA determines that NEPA, National Environmental Policy Act, applies to a proposed action, it needs to decide on the appropriate level of review. According to the policy, the three levels of NEPA are a categorical exclusion, an EA, or an EIS. Under an EA, the review could bypass the public. The other thing is that an EIS public participation is mandatory, Chapman said. There will be a public hearing and there will be a public comment period. With an EA, that's optional. If the agency wants to, they can open it up to public comment or have a public meeting, but they don't have to. There's no law that says that it's required. This needs public participation. That's it regarding SpaceX. Now let's see what we have regarding Northrop Grumman. American Global Aerospace and Defense Tech Company, Northrop Grumman, decided to shut down its Space Coast-focused Omega program 
as their Omega rocket was not selected in national security launch contracts latest round. We have chosen not to continue development of the Omega launch system at this time, Northrop Grumman spokesperson Jennifer Bowman said in a statement. We look forward to continuing to play a key role in national security space launch missions and leveraging our Omega investments in other activities across our business. Bowman also said on Thursday that the company does not want to protest against the Space Force's decision to give the launch contracts worth billions of dollars to United Launch Alliances and SpaceX for National Security Space Launch Program's second phase. This includes several launch programs for both companies in 2022. However, other companies like Northrop Grumman and Blue Origin did not get the opportunity. The medium-heavy lift Omega rocket aims to deliver national security missions like the Global Positioning System and Intelligence Gathering Satellites. This rocket was related to NASA's previous Ares-1 program, where NASA has planned to use Ares-1 to launch Orion capsule, but the program was canceled by the U.S. government in 2010. In 2018, Grumman was awarded $800 million by the Air Force to continue the development of the program. The 200-foot Omega rocket was very far from vaporware, however. The company had test-fired its booster and teams were modifying some hard wires for the rocket at Kennedy Space Center. Omega rocket was unique from other rockets in case of the fuel department. The rocket used solid fuel for its first stage booster, whereas other rockets like ULA's Atlas V and SpaceX's Falcon 9 used liquid fuel, though solid motors might be added later. On Tuesday, September 8th, Northrop Grumman won a contract worth $13.3 billion for its solid motors, which would be included in Air Force's new intercontinental ballistic missile. Let's move to the last segment now, where we'll cover an update regarding Blue Origin. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos celebrated the 20th anniversary of his private aerospace manufacturing company, Blue Origin. The company still has not sent astronauts into space or even launched a rocket in Earth's orbit, but despite that, it has spawned next-generation space startups like Relativity Space. Relativity Space is a private American aerospace manufacturer company that pulled up stakes in Seattle, now moved to Los Angeles, California. As a result, the company includes 165 employees only, but it's already preparing for its first launch of Terran 1 rocket, a contract worth a million dollars. The company will launch its rocket from Florida. One of the co-founders and the CTO of Relativity Space Company, Jordan Noon, tweeted this week that he'll take a step back and become an executive advisor in preparation for starting my next venture. While Relativity's second co-founder, Blue Origin veteran Tim Ellis, will stay on as post as CEO. Other startups are working quietly, among them three startup area ventures. Stokes, Reach, and Starfish Space are working with Blue Origin Connections. Stoke is one of the startups located in Renton, Washington. The CEO of Stokes, Andrew Lapsa, and Thomas Feldman co-founded the company. The co-founders of the company have a core connection with Blue Origin. Andrew Lapsa developed Blue Origin's hydrogen-fueled BE-3 and BE-3U engines. And Thomas Feldman, an engineer who was responsible for designing the components of liquefied natural gas-fueled powerful BE-4 engine, which Blue Origin will include in its new Glenn rocket. Stoke-Space.com, the official website of Stoke, says that the company is building technology to seamlessly connect Earth and orbit. In May, the company won a $225,000 contract for Small Business Innovation Research SBIR, Phase 1 grant from the National Science Foundation to develop an integrated propulsion solution for reusable rocket upper stages. Stoke will use the NSF funding to develop new technology enabling space launch vehicles to re-enter the atmosphere and land propulsively at a target destination for reuse. SpaceX's Falcon rockets and Blue Origin's upcoming new Glenn rocket both have first-stage reusability feature. Reach is a new startup incorporated in February in Maple Valley. Though its official website is still password protected, LinkedIn shows Mike Crean as founder and CEO of the company. Crean was in this field for a long time. At first, he worked with propulsion systems at SpaceX and Pratt & Whitney. 
After that, he was a senior propulsion engineer at Blue Origin for at least a decade, thus has a lot of experience. The venture aims to accelerate the time and reduce the cost for new launch startups to get commercial viability, thereby growing the overall launch market. Starfish Space was incorporated last November in Kent, Washington, same place where Blue Origin has its headquarters. Former Blue Origin flight sciences engineer Trevor Bennett and Austin Link, who also worked three years at Blue Origin as a flight sciences simulation engineer, co-founded the Starfish Space Company. Blue Origin's previous autonomous control engineer Ian Heidenberger is appointed as the principal roboticist in Starfish Space. Starfish says the company is working on an on-demand in-space transportation service, including a space tug that can perform a variety of satellite servicing missions. The startup company is planning to build a trusted autonomy software capable of docking with electric propulsion. Twenty years ago, Jeff Bezos founded Blue Origin with a goal to build the heavy-lifting infrastructure for a wider space industry ecosystem. However, the current situation point out that the company itself providing a seedbed for that ecosystem by building other startups. That's all for today. Keeping many of your requests in mind, we've been covering several updates apart from SpaceX, and we hope you like it. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.